so <laughs> come March, mm. um, when when things were when there were changes changes happening at other universities because we're we're always monitoring what what's going on in in the academic higher education world. Um, there was, of course, uncertainty as to what would happen at Texas State, what would happen at Texas and San Marcos, and how that would impact us. Um, but when the university made the decision to go virtual after spring break, um, Lenny and I kind of just kicked into like, okay, let's problem solve. Like, we can freak out later. Like, what needs to happen to ensure that <laughs> and um, that we can continue to employ the, the, all the SI leaders. <laughs> Um, to continue to deliver to deliver the services that we know the students are going to need and want, uh, and how can we need to, how can we do that in a way that is minimal amount of stress, minimal amount of, of of worry because we all have other things that are that we are kind of worrying about. What are some of the biggest takeaways you'd say you see in, in some of the data that you, you continuously track? I, I would say that without data, with a program like this, it would be difficult to um, continue requests for funding in general because the stakeholders at the university are looking to say, okay, we're spending X amount of dollars on this program. What is that going to? How is that serving students' needs? Um, but also in terms of program assessment, we we wouldn't be able to to make changes to the program if we didn't collect the data that we collect. Um, so so that's something that we 100% are, are very serious and, and very strict about um, being able to collect data. Always thinking about okay, are we collecting the relevant data? Are there circumstances like 2020 where we might adapt things to collect things that are relevant to how we're going to run? Um, I, I would say biggest takeaways would be um, a lot of the comparative data. So taking a look at like the students that attend sessions versus students that don't attend sessions and where their GPAs and where their grade course outcomes differ. Um, and and that, that goes to the extent of just those that have attended, those have not, that have not attended, but also of those that have attended, those that attended one to four sessions, five to nine, 10 to 14, 15 plus. Um, because that paints a very different picture. So, someone who, um, let's let's say you're talking to a student and they say, oh, I, I went to SI sessions and it didn't help. Um, in, in other, if a student attends one SI session, they may not get the same out of attending sessions as someone who attends 10, 12 in a semester. Um, because we know from experience that students that are consistently attending are getting that practice of, of critical thinking, getting that practice of taking a look at a problem and saying, okay, what are the steps that I need to break down at, at collaborative work, collaboratively working with others and um, going going through that entire process is, is what's going to get students the, the end goal of, of greater study skills, of, of greater course competency. Um, and so, so I, I would say for sure that comparative data of looking at those that have attended SS sessions and to what extent they've attended. Um, and then the other thing that I really love is um, when we like filtering through the qualitative data, so the student responses, um, because I, I always laugh at personalities and how honest, um, I laugh at the personalities and I like how honest students are um, in, in sharing their thoughts about their experience um, and it's it's really great to see students that will um, leave leave a note in the survey that's like so and so is the, the best SID I've ever had. Like give them a raise or like it's just like awesome in all capital letters um, or writing out like paragraphs like I I really enjoy the opportunity to to work with others and I wasn't too sure but my experience was super positive. Um, so, so both seeing seeing the numbers, see, seeing seeing the, the the outcomes of grades and outcomes of attendance, um, but also seeing just open ended student responses to to participating, um, are, are are all valuable pieces of information that guide us as as the years go on um, to make changes as we need or to continue um, particular elements of our program that are having having positive and effective um, outcomes. There's um, something that my boss said to me very early in my time at Slack, and um, we were talking about the end of term surveys. 
And uh, the end of term surveys are very qualitatively driven, right? They're, so they're more about student perception and satisfaction with the program, um, as opposed to a quantitative outcome, which is data and GPA and participation rate and all that, right? Um, and she said to me, and it's, I, I don't know why, it just kind of really made a lot of sense. She said, if you're not going to put it out somewhere, there's no point in collecting it. What are you, you know, what are you doing? You're wasting your time and the paper that the Scantrons are printed on, right? Which at that time we were scan, we were on Scantrons, right? She said, there's no purpose if we're not going to, you know, if we're not going to put this somewhere, right? Um, and so, you know, dedicating the manpower because it does take time for, um, you know, like the slides, Nick, that you were mentioning a minute ago, right? The, the information that we send to the faculty um, we send them their quantitative and their qualitative data every semester, um, but we don't just send it to the faculty. We send it to the chairs of the departments. We send it to the deans of the colleges. We send it all the way up to the office of the provost um, so that they can see, right, um, that we are not only making a, a quantitative dent in the DFW rates of these classes, but we're also having students write these narratives, right, these really awesome, fun, sometimes funny um, comments about their experience and why it was helpful. Um, one of the ones that I love seeing is, thank you for making me do this. Mm. Um, you know, and we see that a lot. I, I wouldn't have done it if it hadn't been a part of the class. And now I know and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so um, it's, it's, I think, one of the fun things about uh, the outcomes is getting to really see because they're they're numbers, but they're people. I mean, they're they're students that uh, they're not just you know uh, A's, <laughs> right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think for me personally, besides the obvious, you know, I get trainings and I get paid and I get uh, all these other benefits from being an SI. It's uh, sometimes uh, after the SI session, I always stay maybe like uh, two minutes or three, just kind of if anybody has any questions after session or something like that and some people really just stay and tell me thank you like this was so helpful or they'll just be like oh, i needed to hear that like i needed to hear it a certain way and now the whole chapter makes sense and mm -hmm. it's just kind of like those small but so reassuring comments that just kind of in a way keep me going like okay i'm i'm doing a decent job at least or you know at least at least they're understanding or you know, maybe what I'm saying is correct or it just kind of, I guess, mentally kind of keeps you going. Um, and I, I guess that's kind of the same thing with the, the qualitative statements that you all were kind of just mentioning. And mm -hmm. I just I kind of thought about that as well. It's the end of term. It's the um, it's the immediate feedback. Right. Because the quantitative stuff is kind of long term. You know, how did you do on your on your uh, class? What was the outcome of the grade? But you can get the immediate feedback. Right. Um, I had a really similar experience at the very end of training with y'all's training, which we had never done a full pre-semester training online before. We were really concerned about it. Oh my gosh, how is this going to be, right? Um, and did what we could. But at the very end of it, we sort of asked you, like, how are you feeling? Um, and one of the students wrote something like, um, I was so nervous at the beginning of this week, and now I just feel really ready. And I'm like, you know, energized and all that kind of stuff. And that, very similar to what you're talking about, Edgar, I was like, oh, thank you, right? Like, <laughs> because we were worried, right? We were worried. It's very different when we're used to having all of you up on the fourth floor of Alkek all together, you know, for those two days and really getting to interact and talk and get to know one another. Um, the online is very different, right? But, um, but we were really gratified to have that kind of feedback for sure. And Edgar deserves all the credit for this, but um, he got the idea of actually surveying our students at the end of our sessions. Uh, we would do like a qualitative survey, like, hey, I'm trying this. We're both new SI, so we're really just feeling out what we're good at and what we need to keep working on. So it's like a simple maybe two minute survey that the students would fill out at the end of the session. And that's really helped us kind of guide our SI sessions and where we want to focus on in the future. Yeah. And so, yeah, great job, Edgar. I do that too now and, and whenever we have time. But I think something we should also touch on is, I'm sorry? Is Edgar, are you a chem too? Uh, I am chemistry for engineers. Okay, e-chem, mm -hmm. right. So, e yeah, we do chemistry for engineers, general chemistry one and two, 
organic mm -hmm. chemistry one and two as well and up into OCHEM 2, it's, it's all mandatory for the chemistry courses as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I know in the beginning you said when you first started, it was 25 SIs. For perspective, how many SIs do we have now? Uh, right now, I think we're a little over 60. Yeah, close yeah. to like 70, or like, I almost said early 70. Uh, the the <laughs> lower, lower end of 70. I think yeah. at our peak, at our peak, we've been around 120 ish mm -hmm. SI leaders. Um, wow. But yeah, this this method we're we're close to 70, like 273. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something important to mention that um, I know at the big or earlier in the semester you said a lot of the departments here at Texas State received budget cuts, but um, Slack was actually one that received an increase in their budget, right? Because yeah, go ahead and speak on that a little bit. No, that's okay. No, we, we in increase. No, um, we we did not totally escape the budget cuts. So, um, uh, as everybody's aware, right, the enrollment of of your university is going to drive the type of money, not only because of um, tuition and fees that you're paying locally, right, but also because the state of Texas. Um, pays Texas State a certain amount of money based on our enrollment, okay? So um, for every percentage point in enrollment um, that we drop, we, we lose about $2.8 million. I believe it was $2.8 million from the university. I mean, from, I'm sorry, from the state of Texas, okay? okay. Um, so they, when all the stuff started happening with COVID and we, and we were like, oh man, what's going to happen? And are, you know, are people going to be able to afford to go to school, you know, in the fall and, and all these different types of concerns? Um, what would, you know, how would the pandemic impact us? Um, they were estimating as, as high as 8% as far as our drop in enrollment. And that obviously is going to really impact, you know, what we can do, right? Uh, what type of service we can deliver. Um, we were really, really fortunate. I think it was actually right at 1% is what our drop in enrollment was for, for the fall. So I know that the university was really, really happy that, uh, we did not see the type of decrease that we, we thought we might. Um, but again, that's just the amount of money that comes from the state. That's not also the, the monies that are generated locally, right. With tuition and fees and things like that. So, um, almost everyone university wide was asked to uh, pony up, right? Everybody had, to, everyone university wide had to give up a little bit of something. Um, but Slack was very, very fortunate uh, in terms of, of not having the types of really, really deep, uh, significant cuts that a lot of other areas of service um, have experienced. Um, and I think that really um, speaks to you know, the university recognizes that we're, we are a student centered, student focused frontline service for academic support. Uh, and there are several on campus, right? The Writing Center, uh, Math Cats, the, the CLC, Collaborative Learning Community, um, the Athletic Academic Center, right? There's, there are several, the TRIO programs um, and things like that. But Slack has been around for a really long time and we deliver service in, in lots of different modes. So Slack Lab, right? But we also have the Veteran Academic Success Center. We also have the SI component. And so um, I think that's why they they really wanted to, to protect us, I guess, as much as possible, um, knowing that we were gonna be in a really uncertain environment, right? Like not, not knowing how the students would be reacting to you know, predominantly online classes and, and, you know, synchronous versus asynchronous teaching, right? Are you getting live instruction or are you having to watch videos or, you know, I mean, there's lots of things that can impact how you take in that content, right? Um, so we, we did not, we did not get an increase. No, we, we did not get. Yeah. Sorry for misunderstanding. No, 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 that's okay. But, um, but we were, we were really fortunate. There are a lot mm. of programs, um, not just at Texas state, but, but, the, the state of Texas, right across the state of Texas, who who really dramatically um, uh, were impacted, you know, by uh, by the by the budgets for sure. Um, something I just kind of want to mention is you said something that kind of really resonated to me, and it was how is the pandemic going to impact us, right? And I feel like everybody in the world, you know, at some point in the past 
what is it now? Eight months, seven months. Mm-hmm. Uh, at some point, had to ask themselves, okay, how is this going to impact me? Right. Besides, you know, my personal life, you know, like my social life and all that stuff being impacted, my work life, you know, income and, you know, how things are going to be managed and all this stuff. And so my question to you all is, well, when you had that thought of uh, how is the pandemic going to affect Slack um, in terms more of this year has been very different for many different reasons. Uh, But more as we've all kind of just hit a little bit throughout this conversation we've been having is we're all online this semester right uh when it comes to doing si sessions at least for chemistry uh but really it's online right uh so when and you know what was going through your head when all this was going on and how did you all just kind of okay well this is the plan and we're gonna try our best so (laughs) come march Mm-hmm. Um, when when things were when there were changes changes happening at other universities because we're we're always monitoring what what's going on in in the academic higher education world. Um, there was of course uncertainty as to what would happen at Texas State, what would happen at Texas and San Marcos, and how that would impact us. Um, but when the university made the decision to go virtual after spring break, um, Lenny and I kind of just kicked into like okay let's problem solve like we can freak out later like what needs to happen to ensure that <laughs> and um that we can continue to employ the, the all the si leaders um to continue to deliver to deliver the services that we know the students are going to need and want uh, and how can we need to, how can we do that in a way that is minimal amount of stress minimal amount of of, of worry because we all have other things that are that we are kind of worrying about and so um, we spent time over spring break developing um, how to transition to to virtual um, and building a, a virtual zoom training manual for the staff and developing a, a, a virtual training um, in that second spring break week that we had Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I personally used my experience in w- when I tutored for French, I tutored part, part of that included virtual tutoring. Um, and so l- leaning on, on my experience there and, and what other institutions are doing um, to find what would work best for our program, for our demographic of students. And so in the spring, that looked like just transitioning all of our sessions to virtual um, training you all on, or I guess you guys weren't on the scene, but training the, the, the staff at the time on what are the challenges and, and what are the ways that we can help, that they can help students in a session um, and get participation and, and use the whiteboard and, and still make it collaborative because we, we were very firm in, in maintaining the same philosophy that we've always had, that is very collaborative based, that is very student centered. Um, and so thankfully that, everything that we did made made for a really smooth uh, transition from in-person to virtual in the spring. And then that continued actually in, in summer, all all SI sessions were, were virtual, every, from, from start to finish were virtual. Um, and so that gave us some um, insight as to any changes to the process that we would make for this semester of fall, um, as well as asking you all, um, as, as individuals got hired and as, um, Circumstances changed throughout the summer in, in not knowing what the fall was actually going to look like. Um, we we pulled both students and we pulled um, SI leaders um, to see their level of comfort in holding in-person sessions, to see what their personal schedules look like in terms of being purely attending class online or in person. Um, because we didn't want to make the decision of like, oh, well, we're just going to go face-to-face or we're just going to go virtual without without um, understanding where everybody was at, both the students and um, SI leaders. And so ultimately, ultimately we decided for um, the sessions that mandatory, quote unquote, um, but where attending sessions is part of the course credit, it's an assignment. Um, for, for ease of access um, and to ensure, it, mostly to ensure access that um, there isn't anybody that's kind of left out of, of the opportunity to attend. Um, all of those sessions this semester are are virtual via Zoom, um, but we do have some uh, little in in respect to all the sessions that we that we hold. But um, some SI leaders do hold in person sessions, of course, with with 
the appropriate protocols um, in, in, in courses and um, sections that it makes sense to do that. And, and there are students that, that might have the opportunity to do so. so. So again, like spring, it was very much like, okay, not, no time to freak out. Like we just need to problem solve. How can we kind of transition? Um, and then using the summer virtual everything as kind of like an experiment to see um, from start to finish what we might change and edit and then trying something new in fall with a, a purely virtual pre-semester training and then some in person, some online. Um, and, and thankfully things have, have uh, I, I think because of all the work that we put in and all the time that we put in um, has paid off um, so that we're not running into too many, too many unexpected, like, oh, uh, this might be an easier way to, to submit session plans or um, training links we can adjust to be in this format type. Um, so yeah, a, a, lot of, a lot of meetings, a lot of brainstorming, a lot of um, the leadership team coming together and saying, okay, we, we need to figure this out. What are some ideas? Let's, let's just make it happen. And there really wasn't, when he says there wasn't time to really stress, we, um, you know, we're, we're very large by national standards. Our program is a large program. Um, uh, so flipping virtual, needing to train you, right, on how to use the, all the tools that were at your disposal, just determining which, which platform we were going to use, were we going to use Zoom, were we going to try to use something else, um, and then, you know, Victor and, and the seniors, but primarily Victor did just a phenomenal job, like designing the training manual for y'all, doing all of the homework to figure out what would be the best combination of settings and, um, and options to make sure that y'all could facilitate as best as you could in this, in this new environment. Um, I had no experience with virtual delivery. I've always operated in a face-to-face -face environment. Um, we opted to go face to face with fall because I felt like it was going to sort of deliver the best combination of circumstances. We all want to be together again. We all want to be face to face in a classroom again. Um, but because the university was trying to move so many classroom spaces uh, and things, we knew that the odds of us just being able to procure classroom space was probably pretty low. Um, wanting not only to protect the students, um, but to protect the SIs from the exposure to, you know, so many people on a weekly basis, you know, where there was some concern there, wanting to try to mitigate that. Um, you know, so we, we sort of opted to go this route. Uh, and, and now we're, we're really in a place where we're starting to talk about you know, COVID has forced us to do things that we probably would not have done otherwise, but we've picked up some really cool stuff, right? So at this point, what will we carry forward? Um, we might have stumbled on it accidentally, right? But at this point, we found some pretty cool stuff. So what are we going to continue with um, when all of this is, you know, has subsided and we're back to a, a more sort of normal, quote unquote, normal uh, life, right, on the college campus. And so um, it, it was, I mean, it was a roller coaster for everybody. You know, it's a, it's a roller coaster for everybody, but um, just again, leadership and, and really good administ good administration really just, all that does is think about what could go wrong and then try to figure out how to prevent that <laughs> as best as you possibly can um, or to be prepared to deal with it. Uh, and that's really what, uh, what the team did. So um, I think in honestly, in 15 years of, just being at Texas State, but nearly 20 of working in this field, I think this was probably one of the most significant events we've ever had to really deal with or in or experience um, that really changed, you know, like how we how we're operating in in such an immediate way. I mean, it was just like, bam, we're closed, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, I usually take off the week prior to spring break um, because my kids are on their spring break the week before. So I was actually gone a week before y'all were. Um, and, you know, then all this stuff started happening and uh, it, yeah, it was, it was a roller coaster for sure. <laughs> it was a roller coaster. Well, 
first I want to say thank you both of you and the whole team involved in recovering from this change to online because it was truly inspiring. Uh, CamCats, which is a tutoring program at Texas State, started in the spring. And once we were moved online, well, it was like, it was fun. You know, I, I <laughs> didn't have many ideas. We were still pretty small. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, you know, the first week we come back, SI is fully on Zoom and most of the SI leaders are very comfortable already and it's working and it's like, what is going on? Maybe we could do this with the tutoring program. And so we did. And to this day, we're still online. So it was really nice to see another entity, another organization just get to it and, and adapt so quickly. Um, very, very good stuff to see um, and, and it, 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 tr it transformed the way we thought about our tutoring program and our organization in general. Mm -hmm. The second thing I wanted to say was that you made a really good point about, uh, of course, lots of things changed with SI, a lot of negatives that we had to learn from, but there are also some positives. Uh, mm -hmm. Assuming we go back to in-person sessions in the future, do you see some things that you'd like to keep with uh, the SI program that we've had to change this semester? Yeah. For sure, we we actually have a, a retreat for the SI leadership next Sunday, or Saturday, next weekend, uh, it was Sunday, Saturday, uh, <laughs> where, but yeah, so in, in seven days, where um, we've already started the brainstorming process of like things that went really well, things that maybe need need, need some, some tweaking. Um, to, to sit down and, and, and kind of have a conversation and, and looking at spring, what exactly are the things that we want to keep? Um, are, are, are we going to continue to offer some form of in-person um, assistance? Um, are we going to go to a, a virtual tutoring, uh, a pre-semester training, uh, not tutoring, a pre-semester training format? Um, so, so I can't say that there's anything set in stone that we, that we, that we have at the moment, but... Um, after next week, we should be a little bit closer in terms of knowing what for sure um, we're going to try out in the spring or um, or tweak or adjust or find our new ways. But but for sure, I, I think so, some of the positives that we can that we can see all around is um, feasibility of students to attend more sessions if if they're looking to attend more sessions because it's in a virtual environment mm -hmm. and so accessibility. Yeah, so they may not be limited to being on campus or um, I know we have students um, who are not even in San Marcos or Austin and San Antonio. They're they're elsewhere with their families um, and attending classes all online, but they can still access um, access our services um, or individuals who um, have children and work um, or, or have have to have to nav navigate that, whether it be um, child rearing or or helping them through their own school. Um, and so I, I think for sure there's going to be a lot of I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what elements we keep. Mm -hmm. uh, Me too. What things we try out that that might be new for, for spring. Yeah, I mean, training is a, is a great example, right? Training has always been two full days, eight hours, y'all kind of locked in the library. Um, and then another um, six, six to eight hours, probably on and off the week prior to classes beginning, right? Um, I typically step away from SI world to go work with Bobcat Preview and facilitate all the college note-taking workshops and then come back. Well, Preview went online, right? So one of our big summer projects was to create a virtual experience for that. Um, so we didn't have to walk away. Um, we were concerned about, you know, how much is too much online in a single day? How much is enough? Um, you know, can we still get the same type of engagement and interest in this environment uh, with the training experience that we would get if we were able to, you know, rotate classrooms physically in the library, right? Um, so I think, um, and, and it really, I think there were things that we've liked about training. I think there were things that we've liked about about virtual session, the accessibility, um, uh, it creates additional need as well, right? Not just does it, does it create accessibility? Yes, but in order for us to provide that accessibility, we have to train you uh, on how to facilitate via Zoom and, and that takes some time, right? And so dedicating the time out of training to do that. Um, 
So the, yeah, there's, you know, I mean, it's kind of like with everything else, right? Like there's things that people have done, um, you know, to kind of cope and, uh, and we have too. And, and I think there are things that we'll keep um, looking for the, the places that we can continue to challenge ourselves. Um, but it's, it's been interesting. I, I couldn't, I would never have predicted us going fully virtual. I never would have predicted us going fully virtual for training. Um, uh, but, but it, you know, I mean, uh, we've, we've, we've rolled with it. <laughs> we yeah. rolled the dice. We're getting <laughs> we're... through it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm so excited to see what y'all might have in store for this spring. And, and once again, thank you so much for all the hard work you've put in. Cause I'm sure me and Edgar talk about it all the time. Cause we're pretty busy, but we sometimes we'll just think like, man, how many emails did Lindley get today or Victor? <laughs> or we, y'all must be working all the time. So <laughs> it, just know that we really appreciate it. All time high was about 74, <laughs> but that was over a two hour period. Oh, I went to go teach my class and I came back and I had like 74 new in my, in my inbox. Wow. So, I, but, I, think you, uh-huh. I think I beat you. Cause one day I had, I think like right after we started sessions, I had close to a hundred cause it was like 94, 95. Yeah. yeah. Fall is fall is rough with email. Fall is rough with email, but, um, uh, but it's good. I mean, I, I think the thing that we miss, you know, I mean, obviously we, I mean, we all miss the same things, right? We miss the, um, I miss the energy of campus because even though we are in session and it's a fall and, the, and um, it feels different, right? It feels different. There's not as many, it's really nice to be able to park. I will say like, I, I do not have as nearly as much trouble finding a parking space um, but, um, but you do miss the energy and the vitality of it, uh, because that's one of the things that we love. Like when you work on a college campus, it's one of the things that you really love is the energy of a fall semester and, and the new students and things like that. But, um, for sure, everybody's trying to deliver as best as we can. And just to res- just say again, what Nick said, I think this could have gone many ways wrong, but I think in many ways it went amazingly because again just even starting something from scratch like Lindley was saying in the 15 20 years that this has been going on this was the event where okay we we need to come up with an answer now right um change in the least amount of time yeah and and like I was just kind of saying I think uh everything that could have gone right went right i think the training was sufficient and great because i i mean personally it prepared me to okay well i'm a very hands-on person i liked writing on a whiteboard i like you know hey student do you want to come up and answer and it's like okay same techniques let's do them on zoom right Mm -hmm. and um, i mean i had never used zoom before uh i guess i was just kind of like a student joining in but being an actual host and you know all the settings and all the uh having a waiting room and you know all this stuff not only prepared me for the sessions but it also prepared me for the organization that nick and i are you know, president and vice president because it's scheduling that z- reoccurring zoom meeting it's um working with links that are everywhere and it's it definitely prepared me for other aspects of my, I guess you could say, school life, not just my work, you know, aspect of it, which I appreciated in general. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Where where can students who might be interested in Slack and in tutoring or SI uh, go to learn a little bit more about the program if they didn't get everything they wanted from this podcast? Um, if they, I, I'll for sure, like if they are in communication with any member of the staff, right. um, whether it's an SI leader or a tutor, for sure, they, they can ask them, mm-hmm. um, and, and get information that way. But, um, our website is, is another place where it's going to get ample information. And so, um, it's just texasstate.edu slash Slack, S-L-A-C. We'll put that in the description for yeah. anybody who watches this. Great. Perfect. And then, yeah, talk to SIs. I, I like, I love talking to students who are thinking about possibly going into SI or have questions about how it works. Uh, so that's another recommendation. Talk to your SI. I know I got into SI through Gabby, uh, who was my SI last semester. So that's another great way. Um, the deadline to apply for SI is October 26th, right? The priority deadline, yes, October 26th. Um, if okay. anybody's interested after the fact, they can still apply. 
Okay. Uh, in in the fall, we typically have well every semester we have a, a hiring conference, and so um, we'll hire or we'll interview or interview conference. We'll interview about uh, like twenty to thirty SI leaders or potential SI leaders. Um, so so for to again priority deadline would be Monday the twenty sixth of October um, for that first round of of interviewing. Um, but if anybody's interested after the fact, then they they can still apply at any point. Okay. And Great. that application is available on the Slack website. Again, mm -hmm. tsa.edu slash Slack. There's a menu at the top that says supplemental instruction and they can find there's, I think the link says like become an SI leader or something like that. Um, and there's some kind of like frequently asked questions about being an SI, uh, but then there's also the online application. So they'll just submit that online um, to, to submit, to begin the process. So mm -hmm. um, the um, other thing there, and I think there's a really good video on there uh, that'll kind of talk a little bit about the program. It's a really well done website. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of stuff that you can look into and not with an only SI, but also Slack and the other, uh, things that you offer within Slack. So definitely recommend if you're at all interested to check out the website for sure. Um, yeah, Edgar, is there anything else you wanted to, to say real quick before we wrap this up? I had a great time. Yeah, this is kind of great. talking Thanks to my so bosses. Much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least I want to say thank y'all for mm -hmm. thinking of, of us and wanting to kind of initiate this conversation. We're um, so pleased that you're sort of serving as ambassadors to this program. Mm -hmm. um, you represent the student body uh, and, you know, uh, and, and the SI program really well. And so we're super proud to have you as, as our ambassadors in this way. Uh, we would love to talk to any students who are interested. Absolutely. Uh, and again, just really appreciate you know, taking the time to, to let us do this. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you both so much. Bye, everybody. Bye.